Good day, grade eights, and welcome to Tumamina Teaching. You're tuned into your second lesson of Term 4 EMS Financial Literacy. Today, we'll be focusing on how to post the cash payments journal to the general ledger. Before we start with an example, let's recap on a few concepts. We must remember to open the general ledger accounts first. The opening balance from the previous month must be recorded first. These accounts should be posted in a specific order. Firstly, the balance sheet section and then the nominal account section. In the balance sheet account section, the following accounts will be recorded. Firstly, the equity accounts, which is capital and drawings. Secondly, all the assets. And lastly, all the liabilities. In the nominal account section, the following accounts will be recorded. Firstly, income, and secondly, expense accounts will be recorded. You must also remember the two golden rules. If it is a column total in the journal, you post the total at the end of the month. If it is a sundry account, you post the amount on the day the transaction took place. Okay, so let's get down to business. We're gonna post the accounts from the cash payments journal to the general ledger. What does this cash payment journal tell us? This means that the business pays or spends money. That is money leaving the business. The main column in the CPJ is bank. The money in the bank decreases when transaction is recorded in the CPJ. As you already know, bank is an asset. It therefore increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. Bank is credited and we will use the words total payments and the rest of the transactions is debited with the word bank. Let's have a look. We will start with drawings as you should remember the correct order of the general ledger. Now grade eights, do you remember DALEC, our acronym we've been using? Quickly pause this video and discuss with your classmates whether drawings should be recorded on the debit side or the credit side. Yes, you're correct. From the acronym DALIC, the D stands for drawings, which means that drawings increases on the debit side. Also remember, because it is a sundry account, the date that will be used in the general ledger is the specific date that the transaction took place. So in this example, the 27th of April will be used. The next account we'll be looking at is equipment, which is an asset. Now remember grade eights, it's important for you to remember this table off by heart. Equipment was bought which means that the asset, which is equipment, will increase. Now we all know with the acronym DALIC, assets increase on the debit side. The next one is bank. When it comes to the cash payments journal, the business spends money or money leaves the business. This means that bank decreases. Bank is an asset, and according to our DALIC acronym, bank increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. Bank is credited and will post the words total payments as the explanation. So for this example, grade 8, where does stationery increase or decrease? Pause this video and discuss this with your classmates. Yes, you're correct. Stationery is an expense or a loss. So it will be recorded on the debit side according to our acronym DALIC. All right, grade eight learners, we're doing great. Let's look at another account. Next up is wages. Wages has its own column, 
which means we will post the date of the last day of the month. Because wages is an expense or loss, it will be recorded on the debit side. The last account we will be exploring today is telephone. Telephone is an expense or loss and will be recorded on the debit side. And that's it grade 8 learners. Thank you very much for tuning into Tumamina Teaching. Today we've learned how to post the CPJ into the general ledger. For the next lesson, we'll be looking at the CRJ and the CPJ and how to post these and balance them on the general ledger. Thank you.